Okay, Dad, today is Monday, July 29th, and let's start this conversation off by talking about what happened over the weekend in uh, the Golan Heights. Um, maybe we can first start by talking about what are the Golan Heights? Is this Israeli territory? Because the way it's being portrayed is that Hezbollah struck Israel, uh, but then you get these terms, Israeli occupied territory. Is this Syrian? Uh -huh. Is this Israeli? Let's start with first, what are the Golan Heights? And then we'll dive into okay. your analysis yeah. of what happened. Well, the Golan Heights are um, an area of, you know, a mountainous area in northeastern Israel. Or no, 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 I shouldn't have said that. Okay. <laughs> At, northeast of Israel is really the way I should put it. It was seized by Israel during the 1967. Um, and they've held it ever since. But... Uh, but internationally, you know, they, 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 there's never been, it's always been understood that it's occupied territory and that it belongs to Syria. It, it was it was land that Israel seized from Syria in 1967. Now, I remember actually going up to the Golan Heights, you know, during my trip in, what was it, you know, 2011. And it was one of them i thought one of the most fascinating places that that we visited during those those couple of weeks in palestine um i remember okay we we went to a kind of a a, a center there of, of Druze culture you know the, the people that the majority of people that inhabit the golan heights are Druze, which is a um it's a small uh sect ethnic group you know that lives in that part of the world and I remember them showing us maps, and the maps, you see the Golan Heights in a, as a part of Syria. And they made it very clear that they considered themselves to be citizens of Syria. And, they, and you know, it reminded us that the Golan Heights belongs to Syria and one day should return to Syria. Um, so, uh, so that's something that's actually very important to understand. It's not, the, it's only the Israelis pretty much and the U.S. administration that, imagines this to be Israeli territory. It was up until the Trump administration, we always recognized it as being Syria territory, but Trump announced sometime during, you know, his first term that that this was now, uh, that, they, that the U.S. would now acknowledge this as uh, Israeli territory. Now, I don't know that he really has the power to do that. It's just sort of a and an official personal recognition of this territory, but that's that's the exception. The rest of the world and um, regards these as Syrians, and it's the important thing is these, the people who live there regard themselves as Syrians. Too. Okay, so are these people are they Syrian citizens? Like, what is their citizenship? Do they have passports? Like, well, how does it work if they are occupied territory? What does that really mean for the people living there? Yeah. Yeah, actually, I don't know the details of all that. I mean, I think they, you know, there, there's obviously an effort on the part of the Israeli government to recognize them, you know, as to declare them Israeli citizens. So it's just, um, uh, you know, I, 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 if they have Syrian passports, you know, there's probably no way for them to get those passports renewed. It's, uh, I, I don't, I don't. That they, I, have, I imagine they find themselves in some sort of... So if the Druze, they are Syrians, uh, uh, ethnically Syrian, they identify as being Syrian, right. Um, well, then... You know, right, they understand them as being part under the, actually, the government of Assad, the Syrian government. So it's politically, you know, ethnically, yeah, they're Druze. That's the way to look at it. The Druze are found in different places. They're also found in Lebanon and, um, and you know, where they are close allies of Hezbollah. So the Druze are friendly with Hezbollah. They're much more yeah. allied with Hezbollah. Oh, yeah. Do they? Do they? They're is it similar? Resistance. So is it very similar? Is it similar to in the Golan Heights, like it is in the West Bank, where you the occupied territories and there's settlers moving in, and there's this resistance, or are they more right becoming acclimated to or well, they're, assimilated they're into right, Israeli right. society? There certainly are some Druze. I think that have you know, let's say gone over to the other side and have actually, you know, like joined the IDF, but they're the minority. Um, there really has been, there hasn't been anywhere near the violence. I, I, I remember there, there was one settlement that was pointed out to us, but I think it was a very small settlement. Uh, you know, it was Israeli Jewish, Jewish Israeli settlement there. 
Um, it's nothing so that we haven't had the same kind of uh, violence and oppression that we've seen on the West Bank. So is Israel trying to actively settle this land or they, they're more just, I, they claim yeah, it and they're just letting right. it be? Is that kind of how it's right. it is? Well, they or? To, yeah, they, I think they, re, they regard it as an important military asset because, you know, it's a high grade. You know, they have communications, um, yeah, they have military bases up there. Uh, and, you know, from there they can look down into Syria, they can look down into Lebanon. You know, it's an important military asset, and I think that's that, that's how they view it. And there hasn't been a major effort to to settle it or to drive the Jews out of there as there has been in the West Bank and now in Gaza. So it's more they build military outposts and installations, right? You know, Which missile is defense, a, yeah, radars, right. et cetera. Yeah, exactly, exactly. The military installations there, and that's one reason why Hezbollah has been striking it. You know, with with rockets and missiles over the last several months. Okay, well then let's talk about this strike. Do you, was this, uh, in your opinion, do you think this was a strike carried out by Hezbollah or was this something like yeah. an Iron Dome interceptor that hit? Um, right. what, are, what do you think about this strike? Well, I guess there are a couple of possibilities. You know, it, it could have been a Hezbollah rocket that was fired at, you know, a military installation in the Golan Heights. But that was that went off course, you know, maybe was hit by an anti, you know, uh, um, an air defense missile. It, it veered from its course and then uh, tragically and accidentally struck these children. That's certainly a possibility. Um, the Hezbollah vociferously denies it. And I, interesting, I mean, Hezbollah has actually has a record of of owning up to mistakes in the past, you know, occasionally. The, the, the rocks, they, as as will happen, you know, do go um, fail to hit the intended tar target and hit hit a civilian or something, a civilian structure. And Hezbollah has admitted to those in the past. This time, you know, they've they've said that no, that's not our rocket. Now, you know, perhaps they're lying. I I don't know, um, but I I find it absolutely, you know. Uh, the, the the notion that Hezbollah intentionally tried to kill children, you know, at, on a soccer field in Golan Heights, Jews' children that are allied to them, you know, and are at whom they consider to be Syrian citizens, I find that notion is just absolutely incredible. And there's just there's just no chance that that's what they were trying to do. They may have fired the rocket, but it but the intention was to hit some other target. And another possibility is that it was an Iron Dome air defense missile that that unintentionally you know hit these children. It perhaps it perhaps the two missiles collided in the air you know the air defense missile then veered and and hit this this soccer field. That's a possibility. Um, a third possibility is that it was you know a false flag on the part mm -hmm. of Israel. Because I say that just because of the response to it. They immediately leaked on it and said, look, oh, we have proof. This is such a horrible thing, an attack on Israel. This is the, what do they call it, the Hezbollah October 7th. And we have to respond. You know, we're, we're going to have to dis respond disproportionately, which, of course, is what they did in Gaza. So they've seized on it. They've already started bombing Lebanon. You know, we'll see how far they go. So it may have been, I, you know, I, I just don't know. But it may have been an intentional false flag, or it may mm -hmm. have been an accident on either side that they're just seizing on. You know, in any case, they're seizing on it and 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 using it as as an excuse to escalate, and that's what that's exactly what they're doing now. Mm -hmm. I know you hate this type of question, but what, what do you think the likelihood of those three possibilities are? Do you think they're all pretty even, just completely up in the air, or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I find them all believable. I mean, right. I mean, the, the one thing that I simply cannot believe is that Hezbollah intentionally targeted these children. Right. They want to target Arab children that are allied with Hezbollah. It doesn't make yeah. any sense. Right. That's true. But the media, yeah. of course, when I first saw it break, everything was saying that it, they were you know, it was giving the impression that there are Israeli children that were killed. Um, right. And I saw the photographs. They're horrific. Um, yeah. Just body oh, parts blown up. Tragedy. Right. It it really sickens me when I see you know the, this carnage done to children, and then mm -hmm. I see all of these you know influential people on Twitter capitalizing on this tragedy 
to try to create more war and death and destruction. They're saying right. like, this is, look at this. Don't complain when we level Beirut, when Lebanon is right. bombed to the Stone Age. It's like, what, what, what kind of reaction is this? It's just so awful to use the death of these children to try to create more death. And they don't seem to understand that this is going to continue, could lead to the destruction of Israel. And um, right. if, if right. If well, Lebanon... also, you know, the outrage is also is utterly false. You know, it's it's manufactured. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. They don't give know, a damn about right. the Druze. Right. Well, right. also, I mean, they it's, it's a daily occurrence in Gaza. I mean, really, on practically on the same day, what their school was hit, and there were thirty dozens of 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 people were killed in a that were sheltering in Gaza, and many of them children. Now, they got a little bit of coverage, but very little coverage. And instead, we have this manufactured outrage about what, what happened in the Golan Heights. You know, it's just it's blatant. Anybody who's paying attention, is so, this, this has nothing to do. There's no justice. There's no truth here. There's no... So do you think that Israel is going to use this to launch a full-blown war uh, on Lebanon? Do you think that they will strike Beirut? Um, because if this happens, then Hezbollah said that they will strike uh deep into israel and they're not going to re if, if if israel starts targeting civilian centers in beirut hezbollah said they'll do the same in tel aviv um mm -hmm. and they've shown that they can do that and iran said they're not going to sit idly by and watch this yeah. happen oh no, no we're, we're right we're on the edge of the precipice you know are we going to go over it yeah it is just me you know it looks like I, there's no question that there are some people in the israel Israeli government that want to, you know, Smotrich and probably Netanyahu himself. And it may be, you know, that the IDF is telling him that we're not ready. We're just, we just don't have the capability, but we'll see. It's, they're already striking. Well, they're escalating. We'll see how far they go. And the, I, th I think at some point, as we've said before, it's, it's inevitable. This has been Netanyahu's dream really for, for decades. Uh, and maybe he sees here the chance to draw in Iran, to draw in the U.S., and to you know make it wider war. Will, before... will the U.S. really go all in? Do you think that's true? Like, well, what would what that what would that mean exactly? How did that would that work? You know, we we've shown that our our navy can only do so much. You know, they can't right. even stop the Houthis. Right. Um, we're talking about, you know, we're stretched thin. We don't have a lot of munitions. We, we're not producing yeah. uh, Patriot missiles, interceptors. What what can we do? I don't see a ground invasion happening if we start, you know, no using our bases invasion, no. in the Middle East. All those bases in the Middle East will get blown up by you know Iran and uh, Hezbollah throughout the region, right? Like, so what is it that the U.S. Yeah. would do? Yeah, well, they still have a uh, you know a fair amount of firepower. They got Tomahawk cruise missiles, and they've got you know their F thirty fives that um, can do a fair amount of damage. But as we see, it, it may you know it. None of that damage may be consequential. The, you know, look at what happened in Yemen. They spent months at, at, uh, firing missiles into Yemen, and and <clears throat> and they lost. Let's let's right. be honest, right? The, yeah. The problem with the, you know with this region and fighting a war here is that you can blow up civilian population centers like we see in Gaza or or what they're doing in southern Lebanon, but they don't seem to be really. These F thirty fives, F sixteens, and your you know your navy, they they don't seem to be able to do anything really in terms of wiping out, uh, you know Hamas or Hezbollah itself because Hamas and Hezbollah know the capabilities of Israel and the United States and they're all two hundred feet underground so there's not yeah. a lot that they can really do right I mean I don't unless think you so. go right. unless you go in and try to flush them out of these tunnels which is right. going to be which... incredibly I mean, we like it right. makes me think of like Japan, you know, Hopping Island and going to those right. pillboxes. It's just right, yeah, Iwo Jima or something. Yeah, like right. That. You know, yeah, it's very, very costly. It'd be a very bloody affair, and it would uh, involve a lot of losses on the part of the attackers. Uh, yeah, but I, I'm just. I, I know we've caught, talked about this before, but I go through this calculus, and I'm just wondering what is the calculation that Netanyahu and the State Department and the Pentagon have to be making? Because look, they they. Israel is losing against Hamas. They're not able mm -hmm. to conquer, defeat Hamas. And Hamas is just a ragtag bunch. What they've done is they've become a, a global pariah in their effort to destroy Hamas because they've just been enacting a genocide and they mm -hmm. can't get rid of Hamas. So they just start 
you know, they're just carpet bombing the cities. We, we've, we've seen the destruction, you know, right. Gaza is destroyed. There's nothing left. You know, the majority of people could be, you know, hold on. Sorry. Just one second. Um, you, there, there's, there's nothing left <laughs> in Gaza. And what, what's going to happen in uh, Southern Lebanon when they go in, it's going to be the same thing. They use this, this incident to uh, launch a full scale war into Southern Lebanon or in, into Lebanon proper. And they're just going to, face the same thing. They'll destroy civilian centers, the cities, um, and just become even more of a pariah than before, right? Like, Yeah, well, I think you're right. Um, they can't win is what I'm yeah. saying. It's just I yeah. don't understand why they want to, why they're so gung-ho on this. Like, what well, can't they see the, the danger they're putting themselves in? Um, I'm sure some of them do. Um, uh, others are just fanatics and... Have have long wanted a you know an all out regional war, preferably involving Iran and the United States. I think that's well. Looky, I mean, this is this seems to be the um, well the mistake that that leaders around the world have have made. You know, the, uh, most most recently, well, Zelensky in Ukraine, right? He said, "We've got your back," right? The Americans and the Brits told him. Yeah, you go after Russia. We'll supply you with all the the arms that you need. Um, and uh, I, the, you know, the, I, I think probably um, Netanyahu is thinking the same thing. I mean, he gets protests and you know complaints, but he thinks, man, it's this is the United States of America, right? And and I I've got him. I'm leading him by the nose. I can't lose this thing. You know, I'll just go in there and maybe, you know, if, if, if Hezbollah starts hitting as hard, well, then, you know, we've got all those uh, media assets and, and uh, all those politicians in the U.S. Um, when, that, when that comes through the images of bombed Israeli cities and so forth, it's going to be all out war. And the U.S. is, you know, it's, it's going to pull out all stops. It's going to be they're going to. They're going to do the job for us. You know, they're going to be like us, you know, just unconstrained, um, wreak devastation. You know, there's just, there's just going to be nothing. Southern Lebanon will be nothing but a smoking ruin and we'll win. And I ideally, that... so will Iran. <laughs> I mean, I think he probably has a vision like that. I'm just, otherwise, you know, I, I don't think he means to go in there and just, um, yeah, I, I, I think he's going to, like like we like we've said before, uh, he has nowhere to go but forward with this this genocidal this insane campaign. If he just stops it right now, it's so obviously a failure. It means the end of his political career. His career ends in ignominy, and and probably he himself will be in jail. Is there any uh, power that could stop Netanyahu? Is there anything that could remove him from, from power and allow for things to de-escalate and cool down? Because it sounds like the way you're saying it is just Netanyahu's on a one-way, you know, has got a one-way ticket for total war. And that's that's his drive. You know, he's going, keeps on going forward. Can we, can, yeah. is there anything to stop well, it? Yeah, theoretically, I mean, it, well, in fact, the U.S. could stop him. They could just say, no, it's over. You know, you're not going to get another bullet from us. But that's not going to happen. He knows it. He knows it, right? That's It's he, so he, crazy. He was, right. It's so right. crazy. He, why why right. do we allow this to happen? We're going to oh, yeah. blow up the whole world because Israel wants to enact vengeance and bring about the apocalypse? I mean, what's going on here? Like, why? Well, well, <laughs> I, that's where we are. We've talked about, we've talked about Zionism, you know, Jewish Zionism and Christian Zionism, and it, it, you know, it's uh, <laughs> in, in the end, it is, you know, it's uh, it's taken us to where we are. I think it was maybe just the inevitable consequence. I feel you know, like the it's, Zionist project was first hatched back in the 19th century. <laughs> it's so crazy. I feel like it's going to be any day now when Israel goes crazy on Lebanon, you know, in response to this, where we want to get an investigation to know what happened. Clearly, you know, Hezbollah isn't intentionally trying to attack, kill Arab children that are Syrian Arab children that support Hezbollah. Um, but they're going to use this and do have a disproportionate response. Let's see if they bomb, you know, large population centers 
And then it's, then it's, you know, I'm just wondering, is this the, is the fuse lit? This, this, this attack on the Druze children. Did we light the fuse? Because we've been talking about this powder right. keg. It could be, it could be, you know, we'll see. Um, it, you know, it may escalate for a while. They'll just pound you know, um, Southern Lebanon with the, using their, their air power. And then it might stop for a while. It, Cause it, it might be that the IDF just convinces Netanyahu we're not ready yet. Okay. We know we got to do this. We got to take out Hezbollah at some point. Because the, the fact is again, you know, Northern Israel is uninhabitable right now. It's been emptied of approximately 80,000 Israeli citizens who have been spending time in hotels and are getting increasingly angry. And again, it's increasingly, uh, let's say, a sign of weakness on the part of Israel. You know, we, we can't even live you know, within our own borders here you know, because we... Because they keep strengths. on expanding beyond their own borders. Like yeah, they stay well, that's within problem, right. Well, 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 that's one of the things, you know. Well, of course, I mean, this is happening because of the Gaza campaign. Yemen is happening, you know, and the, the, the Houthis and their, their attacks on Red Sea tankers. It's happening because of the Gaza can, campaign. They could, Israel could end, end it, of course, if they ended the Gaza campaign and withdrew from Gaza. But they're not going to do that. So instead of, you know, instead of stepping back, they're doubling down and expanding. Okay, if Hezbollah begins striking cities like Haifa and Tel Aviv, um, and it's all over U.S. media, Fox News is having a field day with it. What do you mm -hmm. think happens? What do you do? What, does well, the U.S. I declare that, war? I mean, like it, it could happen. I mean, the pressure on the Biden administration is going to be overwhelming. I mean, already Kamala Harris has come out and you know completely embrace the Israeli interpretation of this event. And I think we can expect more of the same. If anybody was hoping that she would be really sympathetic to the Palestinians, I think they were imagining things. Um, and she will be told, a lot of people are whispering in her ears, you know, she just what drummed up, I don't know how many tens of millions of dollars in 24 hours or whatever. They say, well, that's going to stop immediately, you know, if you don't, <laughs> you know, if you don't take the Israeli side of this. I don't think she really has an inclination to take the other side anyway, but there's going to be financial pressure and political pressure like you wouldn't believe. I'm just the... wondering, like, you know, what, what a real war would look like. And if, if does this mean a real war? Because the U.S. has been kind of constantly at war, but Congress has never officially declared war since World yeah. War II. We've just been right. doing whatever the hell we want to do or not. We or the elite, the Pentagon, no. the deep state does what it wants to do. And despite, you know, nothing goes through Congress in the formal declaration of war. So do you think if this, something like this happens, will there be a formal declaration of war? Will this be like a real, real no. war? There no, it'll be, be so. Yeah. We, so we, so right. what, what does we, it mean exactly? So will there be mobilization? That's way too unpopular, right? Will there, no. no I so, think so what, at least anyway, they're going to hope to try to achieve it with the assets that they have there. You know, the fleet that they have in the Mediterranean. And they do have. What do they have? They have at least one carrier um, fleet. Then maybe they have two. I'm not sure. Um, do you think? Yeah. So I, you know, they'll do. They'll throw everything that they have. Again, you know, their their cruise missiles, and you know, they'll uh, got a lot of air power and sea power that they can use. But again, you know, as we saw in Yemen, I, I don't think it'll make a difference. And then what right, what are they going next, to target? Any, right. If they're, yeah. you know, there's, there's well, only so many right. targets because if they're all underground right. and they're able to pop up with these right. cheap drones and these missiles right. or Iran is so far away, you can't hit it, you know, like, okay. and I think we still want to avoid a war with Iran. We understand our bases are, well, you know, very what happens vulnerable. when, it, when, when our aircraft carrier gets sunk, that's yeah. going to be a huge I've humiliation. That. <laughs> right. Exactly. That that's going to, one day we're going to wake up and we're going to find that and the world will never be the same again. I mean, it will be a, a real humiliation. And I don't know what exactly these these last couple of decades have been so crazy. It seems like some Pandora's box was opened and just one crazy creature after another. That'll be, you know, the first one I, I would say that kind of ushered in the new age, of course, was 9-11. There are a lot of things we could have done with that. But we we took the ball and ran the wrong way down the field is what I would say. You know, we manufactured these these um, actually non-existent threats like, you know, weapons of mass destruction in Iraq and we launched these terrible wars and um, which resulted again in the deaths of hundreds of thousands and, and so on and so forth. We spent trillions of dollars. We 
well, you know, we can't, we could go on about this for hours and hours, but this will be another tremendous humiliation that's, you know, on the same level as what happened 9-11. And it, it'll bring something out. And I, I don't think it's going to be, you know, I think it's going to be an, a very ugly response on our power. Uh, part, you know, we're going to have people saying, now we got to take the gloves off, you know, as though we, we, we've been behaving like a gentleman for the last couple of decades. I don't know what that means, you know, it's, but it's going to be off. I do you think that there's a chance that, you know, we try to start up this war machine and we turn the, you know, they try to turn the engine on and just kind of sputters and dies and it won't continue that long because I just, I just don't know. Maybe yeah, I'm well, wrong. I, I, I just don't. Well, I, right. What I've seen is just the we U.S. Can do military a lot of damage, you know. But I, but again, like you say, it's mostly the civilian. We can blow up buildings, you know, with the best of them, better than just about anybody else. But to fight a real war, actually, you want to see a real war. That's what's happening in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. That's a, you know, that's a war of attrition. It's a, a bloody, grinding war. And there are, I think the losses are much heavier on the Ukrainian side, but they're not insignificant on the Russian side. You know, the Russians have certainly have lost tens of thousands of men. You know, again, I think probably at least 55, 60,000. And that's significant. That's very significant. I mean, if we were going to have, fight a real war, that's, we actually have to get in. You know, if you talk about people that are dug in in tunnels, just like, you know, the Ukrainians are, you know, they have their fortifications that they've built up over the course of 10 years. They got these systems of trenches that, Sometimes, you know, just every 50 meters is another trench. That makes, that's a hard war to fight, right? And are we really up to that? I, I don't think we are. I, you know, we'll unleash all these missiles and we'll just blow up a lot of buildings. And, uh, but when, when the smoke, set, you know, the, the smoke drifts away and the dust settles, the enemy is going to still be there and still inflicting damage on Israel and, and maybe on our Navy too. Yeah, I don't know where it goes, but again, it's just, it's going to, I think we're fooling of our, ourselves if we think it's going to be easy. I just see that this thing will get, it, if Hezbollah it strikes back into Tel Aviv or Haifa, I just see all hell breaking out really quickly. You know, I, I see the U.S. coming in, doing something. And do you see the possibility of other great powers coming in? I mean, Iran has already well, said Iran that it has, would. Yeah, but it was going to back Hezbollah. Right. Right. And then, then we have, you know, well, Russia that is allied well, with Syria and Iran right, and right. You or know, they some certain, kind of I, alliance. Right. I think they're going to try to stay out of it. But if we, but, but who knows, you know, it, it, it depends on how, well, you know, how far Israel goes. If Israel actually kills Russian soldiers or shoots down another Russian plane, they did once earlier and that, that led to a strong, strong reaction, but strong diplomatic reaction by Russia. Um, but not a military reaction, but eventually it could. One thing is that Russia has been trying to avoid a direct conflict with Israel. So it's told Syria, you know, don't use these air defense systems that we gave you to shoot down their F-35s. But if Israel goes too far, I think there's a chance that Russia will remove that restriction and then that'll be another escalation. Right. Talking about just sort of air defense in southern Lebanon, um, I heard an F-35 fighter jet was turned, uh, had a turn tail and run because it almost got struck by a surface terror missile. And the F-35 is supposed to be one of the stealthy, is supposed to be a stealthy fighter, is supposed to be able to avoid yeah. detection. So that's also right. just another question, just like how much can the Air Force do, yeah. especially if Russia is supplying, there, there clearly are some uh, air defense capabilities already there in the region on yeah. uh, that Hezbollah yeah, we don't possesses. Really know how much, right. Right, but there's, then, there's you know, there. With the backing of Iran, uh, I mean, uh, of potentially Russia, if this thing widens to a wider war and munitions are being, if Russia starts supplying S 400s, S 500s, that could just turn the whole thing around, right? Without the without air superiority, then you know we we know I, I Israel is, is gonna, very limited. Try not to become involved. But may, they they might be dragged into it. Who knows? Iran has said, you know, this is our fight. Hezbollah, they're our brothers, and. And, right. Uh, I mean, yeah, Russia may not even up. need to. Iran right. could do it by themselves. Right. Yeah. I uh, think it's, that's more, it's scary. Right. It's just so. It's just such a stupid, pointless thing that we're just. 
right. walking well, it all started. forward into. Yeah. We can just say no more. Let's stop the killing. No more yeah. bombs to Israel. Right. Right. Let's get everybody settle down. Yeah. Go back to where you were. Back to your home base. Right. Let's take it easy. Yeah. You know, right. chill out I think just it, a little bit. You know, it all goes back. Um, well, you can always go farther back, but I, th I, th I think you, you need to go back to October 7th and our, our reaction to it, in particular, really Biden's reaction to it. He went there and he hugged Netanyahu and he, he gave him the blank check. And it was essentially, you know, we have your back, do what you need to do, right? It was a time, if you know, if we were, if he was a statesman, he would have said, okay, he would have used a combination of carrots and sticks and persuasion to say, look, actually, the world's so sympathetic to you at this point. You can really, you know, score some major diplomatic victories over Hamas and the Palestinians in general if you play it this way. You know, again, if you mm -hmm. if you don't if you go in there, if you have a proportionate, you know, targeted kind of response, and but none of that happened. Right. And, if and you show some that. restraint that you respect, right. then then you can earn the the favor of the world and strengthen your right. position. Instead, right. they just threw it all away just in yeah. this bloodlust. Right. And I, I, they did, you know, again, because they they essentially were told by the, the U.S., yeah, do what you need to do. I mean, that was you were supporting you. There weren't any conditions placed on that. We started, you know, wringing our hands months later when we began to realize the horror that was being perpetrated there and how bad it looked and how much it was harming our own reputation. But by then it was too late. And again, it's a consequence of that 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 really dip, serious diplomatic blunder on the part of, Net, uh, well, not Netanyahu, but Biden. Do, do you see any path for de-escalation or is this do you think it's inevitable that this is just going to blow up and when it's going to blow up i don't think people realize how big it is most people that aren't really paying attention yeah. to this conflict are like oh they're just fighting all the time in that region it's no I, big deal i don't yeah, think no, they this, realize this is, what's this happening is something different right right yeah the temperature has gone way up um well uh, it, there, it's not inevitable that it'll end in a regional war or, or certainly some kind of apocalyptic war. I mean, we're at a real risk of that, but there's a chance that it may just kind of go on as it is with, you know, sort of a, uh, fluctuating, uh, let's say, skirmishes or exchanges of missile fire in the, at the northern border, and it's just continuing carnage in in gaza and starvation it could go on like that for a long time um and uh he it may just continue like that for years even i mean that's a possibility that we look at it just maybe that i think clearly people like uh, netanyahu and smotrich and ben gavir uh, really want to go all out they would like to have an all-out war and again they Netanyahu has always had this dream of, of destroying Iran, and he knows the only way to do that is by bringing in the 800-pound gorilla, which is the United States. Um, but maybe we have there. There are some realists just in the in the Israeli government. I think, especially in the military, and that's something I think that's true of the U.S. government. You know, they're they're not really again they're not peace lovers or anything like that, but they just have a better understanding of what the balance of forces is. And maybe some of those people, like when Netanyahu starts to push, they'll say again and again, yeah, we want to do that, but we can't right now. We just can't. We're going to lose or something. But at some point, you know, they, they I, you know, we're just, I, I don't know who's going to win in this tug of war. Is, is and, there any, I, I saw Turkey, Erdogan made some comments saying that, you know, the possibility of Turkey going into Israel right. is not completely off the table. Yeah, um, I don't know if Erdogan just he just says yeah, things, no, but he's a big he's a big talker. You know, for example, he declared that he was going to, um, I, I think, put an end to trade with Israel, and it turned out nothing happened. You know, it was all all talk and no action. Well, are, are there any countries that would, if this breaks into a wider war, or potentially even a world war, what countries would be backing Israel? Is it just the United States? Do, you, do Does Europe have any power, so to speak, or would they really get involved in this? Because it doesn't seem like it's sure the elite might want to support right. it, but the populations don't, right? Right, I mean, right. You know, we have, okay, when, you, when it was a limited kind of response or a limited action, as we saw in um, early April, 
uh, when Iran sent their that fleet of drones and then of missiles at Israel. Uh, we did have the involvement of Jordan, um, you know, who is uh, Jordan is very closely allied to the West. And then, of course, we did have um, the U.S. I mean, it's even said that most of those missiles and drones were actually shot down, not by Iron Dome, but by by U.S. air-to-air missiles. And the, the Sidewinder. French and the, right. Yeah, Sidewinder missiles, French and the British. Uh, so they did take part, part in that. Um, but that was limited action. You know, there's something else when you talk about and it. it cost us $2 war. billion dollars for two <laughs> right. hours worth of action. Yeah, yeah, something like that. That's right. It may have even been a day. Um, yeah, it's something else. If you're talking about, a, again, a major and sustained war, we already see Europe is just exhausted uh, by Ukraine. It's just, it's been, um, its stockpiles have been delete, depleted. And, and yeah, they really don't have the military assets. I mean, the only, really, you know, the only army in, in, in NATO that's actually worth something or, you know, that is, has a significant army is is Turkey. And Turkey clearly is not going to come in and on the side of Israel. You know, maybe I, I don't really think they'll, and knowing Erdogan, he'll, he'll wait it out and, and continue, continue to make fiery speeches, but won't do anything. But he does, the truth is that he does have a, what, a 700,000 man army, uh, a very significant military force. I see no way out for Israel with this you know they just they've yeah. they've chosen a path that will lead to their destruction i just don't think, right what do they think will happen you can't just go around attacking yeah. all of your neighbors just right and think that you'll yeah. be fine that they'll forget about it in the future you know right. you can't just be massacring civilian population centers like this and can think that it's going to be okay that everybody's right. going to be like okay we'll get along now it's yeah. it's over for well, israel about the it, people right. in israel they right. got you know, I don't like we've said this before. I don't want anybody to die. I don't want Israelis to die. You know, I, and I think the only thing I could tell Israelis there now is like, leave. You have to get out while you can. You know, because I just don't see this ending well. Maybe it it'll well, slow boil for a couple of years, yeah. but the 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 life of Israel, I think it's it, there's a timer on it now, and it's it's the yeah. countdown's begun. Ever since what they've done in Gaza. Is they've gone too far this time. You know, maybe if they were very careful, this is immoral, of course, to slowly kill a little few people well, at a what, time and take more and more land. Right, right. And they were, land. For. Right, I mean, right. And they were getting for decades, right? They've been getting away right. with it, but they went too fast now, you know, and, and right. that's not obviously it's a horrible thing that they're doing. And you're also seeing more and more international institutions coming out of, you know, like the ICJ stated again that all these settlements in the West Bank or where probably the Golden Heights as well, that these are illegal and they need, you know, Israel needs to pull back and remove them. Of course, they're not going to do it, but it's becoming documented that like this, what Israel is doing is wrong and it's illegal and they have to stop. And yeah. they've been saying that again and again. And, but, but there's also, you know, this whole genocide case that's gone through, through the ICJ that's still in the works. And it's right. just the, what they've been doing and just the rhetoric coming from their own leaders there's no way they're not going to get a guilty verdict that this is genocide. I think it's just, you know, it might come out in a, a year or whatever because it's just the courts are slow, but it's over. You know, you can't be a country that has been labeled as engaging in genocide by an international body that basically the whole world agrees and recognizes except the United States. And the United States is clearly on decline. There's no future for Israel now. There's no turning back. I think that Israel's days are numbered. And, you know, if you're an Israeli, you, I think you, you know, the best option for you is to, to leave. Um, yeah, I don't well, know. What do you think? Many, well, many Israelis agree with you entirely. I think what is at least 500,000 have left already. I'm sure it's more. That was. Wait till the first from, missile hits a uh, residential uh, building, Tel Aviv. We're going right. to see what I, what I, what I imagine is going to happen is that. When Hezbollah does unleash hell on Israel, is that the U.S. they they may get involved and try to do some strikes on it, but it's going to become more of a humanitarian relief. I bet you our Navy is going to be trying to go over and evacuate Israeli citizens. You know, I think that's probably hopefully that's that what we we focus on instead of trying to continue the carnage and let everybody die in the region. You know, and they were going to have I don't know. It's just 
it's just I just you know I look at Israel and I'm just like, what are you guys doing? What? what why? Why? You, can you see further down the road? I see on Twitter constantly this rhetoric of like, yeah, we gotta bomb them all the Stone Age again and again. And I just, you know, I always comment like, you fools, what yeah. are you doing? Don't for right. your own preservation stop this right. madness before right. it's too late. Right. I think it's too you know, late. Again, yeah. Yeah. Well, one thing is, you know, you, the, uh, Israel for a while could get away with their policy of just brute force, you know, of of uh, subjugating, of, of, of really terrorizing their neighbors because they were the military superpower of the region and they had the backing of the you know, the world's hyperpower. That's the way it was for a while. But those days are over. We no longer, there. the balance of power has shifted um, so that they don't have that complete uh, freedom of action. And, and the old policy of terror is a huge mistake. You know, when you have somebody you can strike back, right? I mean, again, you can mm. say, well, right, we're gonna unleash it. We're gonna teach them a lesson. Yeah, that's fine when you're dealing with a four-year-old, but what if like that four-year-old has grown up and he's now a teenager, and a, and now you have a problem in your hands? Yeah. Uh, I just I just keep on waking up, looking at the news, waiting for it to happen. I think. <laughs> yeah, it, it may go on for a while, but it could. It's the sort of thing. It could be any day. It, it could drag on for months or even years. But if I, I think it's it's likely i mean a very good chance like we've said before I, that it's going to break out during the next couple of weeks sometime this summer right we, we know we talked about this before you know obviously i i don't want it to happen because it's going to lead to so much death and destruction we, we're talking about you know potentially millions of casualties when this starts to happen and all majority of them will be civilian um but you know it's inevitable and i think this will be you know we're on the like Israel is in real trouble. I think we'll we'll probably cease to exist in you know five ten years, maybe sooner. Um, going down this path, it could be even by next year. Um, but when that happens as well, does that mean I guess the 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 Zionist parasite that is controlling the U.S. government will also die, right? So in that sense, you know, I but it's it's going to rear its head. What's what I think is going to happen when when this war starts to break out. We're going to see the true sort of power of APAC in our government. Well, I think we're you know? already seeing it. I mean, that's one consequence yeah. of this war. And a lot of people have had their eyes open to it. You know, I was mm -hmm. talking to a, a very good friend recently about it. And he said, like, he was always aware that there, yeah, there was something that wasn't quite right. And it was just in the recent months that he began to realize that he saw the true horror of what was going on. He, you know, not just the present horror, but he began to understand what what had always been going on there. And I think that's true of many people. There are probably uh, mm -hmm. hundreds of thousands of stories like that. And, and right, the I mean, they're already, right, they're already showing their, their true colors and showing how, you know, how, how much control the Israeli lobby has. But I think it's really gonna come out of the shadows once it's like, okay, we gotta go to war. The US now has to go to war and the whole machine is turning on that. I think everybody's gonna start to realize and there's going to be a good portion of the population, Christian Zionists and Zionists, that say, yeah, that this is some kind of holy war or something messianic and uh, apocalyptic that we need to carry out. But I think a lot of people will be like, wait, what? Why is this happening? Why Why are we doing this? You know, um, and we will see the, the full exposure of the Israeli tentacles in our government, you know, will be made, made transparent, yeah, right. um, well, even again, more so now. It, yeah, it's happening already. But yeah. I, I think that's right. I mean, again, this is it's, it's going to. So in a way, in yeah. a way, I feel like I wanted. I don't want to happen because yeah. I don't want everybody to die. Right. But I feel like right. this is the only solution. We're we're going down this path, and then well, this could be the right. We don't want it to happen, but we. But it may be at the other end. The, the, obviously, there's going to be a lot of death and destruction yeah, if Israel continues down its current course. But if it does continue down this. This, its current course, I think inevitably um, it's going to bring about the destruction of Zionism itself. It's just, it's going to, there's simply no way, way that Zionism can survive this. Mm. And that, that's the only 
you know, we just hope that it doesn't take a good part of the world with it, you know, when it when Zionism finally dies. You know, we've talked about the Samson option. Yeah, that's, scary. That's a, I think that's a real danger. It could could something that we yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll see.